Well, good afternoon. Uh, Rob Geddes is my name uh, from the AIC here to uh, to host this uh, Deep Customer Insights webinar for the uh, for the AIC. We've got quite a few attendees today, so that's uh, that's wonderful. Um, hopefully, this will be quite interesting. The way I'd like to um, to run it while just while we're just waiting for everyone to um, to log on. Um, They'll, there's quite a, a deal of material to get through, and uh, uh, you can uh, post questions uh, in the little pop-out box on the top right-hand side of your screen. Uh, if you would uh, type those in as you go, as the questions occur to you, um, uh, and uh, we'll get to those towards the end of the uh, of the presentation. Um, I'm hoping to um, to go just over about half an hour uh, with presentation material and then uh, follow through with question and answer and uh, uh, hopefully finish well before the uh, the one hour so you can all get back to the things that uh, that you've got to do. So uh, thank you all very much for attending and uh, I hope this is, uh, is going to be a good a good afternoon for us. This seminar uh, webinar is uh, one of a series of, uh, of webinars that is supported by the Queensland Government and uh, uh, we're very proud as the AIC to um, to bring this to you. Um, the um, AIC is actually a not-for-profit organisation for those who don't know. We were established about 10 years ago um, to help assist companies um, across Australia with innovation, collaboration and commercialisation. We're now part of the QMI Solutions Group which has been around for 20 years helping, uh, it started out with manufacturing, uh, but a broader industry group to, uh, to improve. And we're all about empowering business, giving the, the tools and the education and the insights to move forwards and connecting expertise. We've got uh, a, a lot of connections and we make connections uh, not only between companies uh, and research organisations, but also uh, uh, companies with major projects and and uh, contracts and things. So this webinar series is supported by uh, Decidia, which is the Queensland Department of Science, Information Technology, Innovation and the Arts. And it's all about uh, deep customer insights. And so what is that? Really, deep customer insights, getting a greater insight into your customer base can really help you strengthen your relationships with your current customers, but also develop strong relationships with new ones. It'll help you um, develop innovative new products and services because you've got the greater understanding. And it'll help you understand new and unfamiliar market and customer segments uh, as you launch into those, as you, uh, as you decide whether or not you wish to launch into those uh, and to be able to evaluate those as to whether it's a good uh, business decision to move that way. And, uh, uh, largely, deep customer insights uh, can be had for little money, uh, which is very good to be able to uh, to go down that avenue with a small investment um, before uh, burning money on a bad move. And deep customer insights insights help companies sustain and grow and uh, improve their business revenue and their market share. So with all of that, um, let's uh, find out how we go about it. Um, deep customer insights is an important part of major business. And uh, I found this uh, quote just recently, uh, which spoke to me uh, from the head of Philips Lighting out of the Netherlands. But they're a global organization, as you know, and, the, and part of their guiding statement in 2013 says that we are using deep customer insights and technological innovations coupled with their trusted brand and global leadership position to lead the digital lighting revolution. So they're letting their deep customer insights drive what they're doing in creating the digital revolution together with their technology and their brand and their connections. And you can see here with one initiative that they've got, they're connected with Disney and moving forwards. So uh, it's major players uh, very much in this um, um, in this field and looking at deep customer insights, it's an important part of their business model. Major players such as Hilti, which is a global uh, uh, tool in the, in the construction, building and construction industry, 
Um, they've, they've been a major player for many, many years and they're all about quality, all about uh, high-end products in a, on a global marketplace. And of course, in this tool space, they've been facing a lot of challenges with uh, uh, cheap alternatives. So uh, the economies of scale and mass production in, uh, uh, in China, uh, etc., um, were really eating into their, um, into their market share and so they wondered what to do. So they actually went out and looked at um, their, uh, their customer base and looked at their target markets to see what sorts of insights they could actually find out in the marketplace. And with their analysis, they did quite. Uh, they, they found um, uh, quite a lot of information about the the marketplace that they were in, the traditional power tool marketplace, and it was all about low margins and um, uh, and uh, the, the the product ha had to move quite quickly, um, and the quality was being driven down, the margins were being driven down, and it was a no-win situation for Hilti. So they're looking for insights as to how could they compete in this in this marketplace with uh, uh, many many global competitors uh, providing uh, cheaper al alternatives and copying their research and development. And so they came up with uh, with an, an understanding and insight that the um, people on the building site actually didn't want to own the tools. The tools weren't the end result that they were desiring. They, they actually wanted um, uh, reliability. They actually wanted to get the job done. They wanted to get the job done uh, accurately, on time, um, for the right price. But um, a lot of that was all about having access to the tools, not necessarily owning the tools. And there's a lot of problems with the, um, the cheap knockoffs, uh, etc. So they decided to back their, um, back their product and came up with a bit of a different business model of uh, effectively uh, leasing tools um, to the construction industry. And this changed the whole way they looked at things and that came out of deep customer insights. And now they're able to compete, the quality level is going up and their margins are increasing. So um, uh, they're a lead uh, manufacturer, a lead provider once again. Um, but their business model has changed due to these insights. And it isn't just global players. Um, Australian um, uh, companies are doing exactly the same sorts of things. Here is an Australian company. Uh, I was involved with the early phase of uh, of development of this of this product. It's a termite detector, electronic termite detector. You can detect a term, d detect termites uh, in solid materials uh, using this device. But they found uh, early on with their interviews with um, with their uh, potential target market that the target market couldn't afford to keep the uh, to purchase the, the device in the first place, this new technology device, and to keep maintaining it, keep upgrading it, and keep it uh, functional. And if they had an old machine, it could potentially and it was thrown around in the back of the truck, etc. It could potentially give false readings and therefore lead to catastrophic uh, results with a billing being eaten by termite and the uh, termite inspector being sued by the homeowner, etc. So the way that they um, got, a, got around this after talking to their target market, after talking to pest control operators, etc., was that they would much rather actually have it on a, a costed to the job. So on a job by job basis, they were charged for use of the tools. They didn't own the tools, it was use of the tools. And again, they were able to change their business model in much the same way as Hilti did to, uh, to be able to deliver the outcome that the customers wanted uh, for the right price. They were actually able to deliver value to the customer um, by interviewing and talking to the customer and changing the way that they thought. Um, the same thing holds true for um, for all sorts of different industries, and here is um, uh, Phil DeBella from DeBella Coffee, uh, which is actually growing from strength to strength all around the country as a major uh, uh, coffee um, roaster and producer, um, major brand um, out of uh, out of Queensland, and. One of the major things with Phil is um, he's very, very happy to speak to his current customers, but he's not that concerned about his current customers because they're already um, buying into the Debella brand. 
he would actually rather speak to people who aren't his customers. And he learns so much out of um, people that aren't his customers and he builds that back into his business. So that's a, a major insight um, that Phil gave me as well as to the importance of uh, looking at customers but also the customers that you don't have. Why aren't they buying and getting those sorts of insights. So with your company, have you got access to a range of people who are in your sweet spot, in your target market that you actually um, need to be talking to to find out why they aren't buying from you? Getting insights from your customers in that way. And what all of these companies are trying to do is, de is deliver value to customers because that's what customers pay for. Um, they don't necessarily want to buy the tool. They don't necessarily um, want to have um, your particular service. They want the outcome. They don't care about your business necessarily. They care about their results, what, uh, what they're wanting to achieve in their lives. Uh, and they'll pay a certain amount for it if it's value for them. So it's all about this value proposition. What actually determines value in the eye of the customer? And that's what pays for our business. That's what keeps our business going. If we understand that, then we're better able to make decisions for our business. So that's the whole target, getting, value, getting the value proposition to deliver value to our customers. Those who have been to, involved in one of the previous webinars or some of the uh, seminars that um, AIC has been holding will have seen this business model canvas previously. Um, for those who are new to it, it's just a diagram uh, of everything uh, about how a business operates and how a business makes money. And it, right in the centre of that uh, of that diagram is the value proposition. It's what your business offers the world, and in fact, it's what your business offers to customers in your uh, in your customer segments in your target market. And so, what the customer wants. Uh, is what you need to provide, otherwise the customer won't pay for it. You need to provide value for that customer. And so we're all about understanding that customer to provide the right value proposition. And uh, for those who'd like to um, uh, download one of the canvases, the, uh, the, the web address is there. This is the diagram. You can use the canvas to actually map out how the business operates. But understanding those customer segments and working out what our value proposition is, is all about is key to coming up with the business model. Um, getting deep insights into that customer is the vital first step. So we need to look at these customer segments. For whom are we creating value? Who are our most important customers? And what do they think and what are they looking for and what will they pay for? Uh, how much will they pay? Have we got a mass market or have we got a niche market? Who's in that niche market? How is it segmented? How do they behave differently? Is it diversified? And is it quite multi-sided? Can we get money from different aspects of that, that, um, that target market? All of these things are important to us in understanding the customer so that we can develop the business around it. So imagine knowing what your market will do. Um, that's what we're proposing is getting into a position where you're customer centric, where you understand what your customer will do next, how they will behave. Imagine the power of being able to foresee what the market needs next um, and how that market will behave. Hindsight is brilliant, but developing a system to shape the future is actually much better. So vibrant businesses like Philips and like Hilti, like Dubella, like Termotrack, all work on deep customer insights to determine the next phase of their business and they turn that into market advantage. So what we're proposing is that you move from being organisation centric about what is it that we do, what do we have to offer, what have we got to sell, what price can, uh, can we sell it at, all of those things which is about me, 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 about the company. In f instead, turn it around to becoming a customer centric organisation and be customer centric. What jobs um, does the customer need to get done? What, um, what are they trying to do? What are their aspirations? Uh, what are their needs? What are their wishes? 
what are their hurts and their pains, become customer centric, understand the customer and you can better deliver their needs. So that's the aim, is, is to develop a sound understanding of what drives customer behaviour, to fundamentally understand what the personal and professional influences inform and guide their decisions and actions. Now large global corporations like Philips use researchers and anthropologists and sociologists and a huge budget obviously to understand all of this, but um, small firms, firms don't have this luxury. But the good news is there's a number of simple tools that are easy to use and free um, that you can use tomorrow in your business to uh, help you understand. Uh, you just need to spend the time and learn how to use them. So let's um, get into some of that. Uh, a, a good idea is to actually have a look at your customer segments. Really understand um, where your money comes from. People who have been to my workshops will, will recognize these four customer segments. Um, but that's just a, a visual, just trying to actually capture in a, in a simple way um, who you are speaking to. Try to make it personal. Try to understand the people. Make an emotional connection with them, not just have them as categories and, um, uh, and names on a spreadsheet. These are real people who are going to make real decisions and fork over their hard-earned cash um, to buy from you. The same holds true in business to business transactions as it does in business to consumer transactions. Business to business, um, you're actually dealing with a real person. They've got other pressures involved, but you're dealing with a real person and understanding their pressures and their needs and wants is vital. So get a picture of them, find out their name and their details and um, get them up on screen. Go quite deeply into it, have a look and develop a customer persona. Find out all sorts of different uh, uh, information uh, about that customer and, um, uh, and and get deeply into their heads, really understand where they're coming from, what their needs are, what sort of buyer they are uh, of your products and services and work out all the different segments within your, uh, within your target market. Find out what they say. Uh, if in some, some industries such as the uh, uh, the travel and tourism industry, TripAdvisor is there and you can find out all the things that they say about your organization. Um, that's wonderful to get inside the heads of your target market. Understand too where your uh, key, um, uh, where your money's coming from, from the, uh, uh, from the customer profile. Uh, is it actually coming from um, people who are jumping in early and will uh, and will pay uh, pay money for a, a new device, or in fact, is your target market um, quite conservative and will have to wait and be a late majority, have to wait for uh, uh, other um, people to take the lead and for it to be proven in the marketplace, etc. Understanding your target market and who are the ones who are going to jump and be the early adopters uh, amongst your uh, amongst your seg uh, uh, customer segments is very important to know as well. Really understanding the customer behavior. Another part of understanding customer behavior is that not every aspect of what you do and what you provide um, will actually win you the work or get them to, to pay. There are qualifiers and winners and what I mean by that, uh, the qualifiers are just the minimum requirement to be considered for you to actually be on that tender list, for you to actually be uh, on, on consideration on the, on the short list um, for the customer to buy. So there are certain things which are just the startup requirements, um, the bare minimum. And there are other things which actually help you win orders to overcome competitors. They're the order winners. So understand in your customers' minds what are the qualifiers, the bare minimum that you have to have to be there, to actually even be in the race and what it would take to be a winner. That's changed over time as well. In the 70s, um, anybody uh, uh, could really be in the race, but quality was the, was the winner in those, in those times. Quality then became the qualifier. You, of course you had to be quality, but service was the next thing. And it's changed over time. And in your industry, it could be different to this. Um, so service was the qualifier then and responsiveness then became the winner. 
then responsiveness was a requirement in the 2000s and flexibility and information uh, and, and being connected um, certainly came through in the 2010s. So service global support responsiveness to individual needs. It's all about me, 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 customizing it for me uh, in the in the current uh, current climate. And then of course there's price. But if you do the 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 winning requirements very well, it's not about price. It's actually you satisfying their needs better than anybody else. And so you can actually have a conversation that's not about price and that you can improve your margins, increase margins. And uh, uh, that's really where we want to be and not in the uh, commodity sphere. Also understanding in your market as well is your product uh, in the growth phase or is it a mature product or is it actually in decline? The requirements that for qualifiers and winners are actually quite different in different stages of the market as well. So understanding your product and how it is in the eyes of the customer is a vital thing too. And doing some sort of strategic external customer focus uh, assessment is really what we're going to be talking about today a lot. How can we build and reinforce the value that we're, the, that we're trying, to, uh, uh, trying to give our customer? How can we establish a loyal, a loyal relationship with our customers and how can we anticipate and understand their needs, especially those that they find difficult to express, the needs that they don't even know that they have? Uh, so it's important to do the external customer focus and most of today will be about that. But it's also important to do the internal focus as well and have a look at how is it um, that, uh, that we see ourselves and how do we portray ourselves in the marketplace and does it actually match what our customers are wanting. So how do we know what our customers are wanting? Well, there's a number of different ways and that's what we're talking about here is gathering deep customer insights. The, the first way is something that every business should have and just have some systems to continually monitor. Have some feedback systems to maintain suitable qualitative and quantitative feedback uh, from your customers. This just needs to be in place on a regular basis and part of your DNA, part of who you are, to gather information to track whether or not you're actually achieving what you're setting out to achieve. Are your goods and services satisfying a need or are they not? So one um, uh, easy way is just the customer feedback form, uh, whether it's actually a, a tick and flick piece of paper or whether it's a, a, a tablet uh, form, it's important to have general, you know, general customer feedback and uh, uh, you certainly need to, uh, to build that into your daily systems. Um, in some industries, such as the hotel industry, the uh, customer feedback can be done by a third party and there's the TripAdvisor uh, um, process. Uh, and you can actually help with TripAdvisor to push the customer to actually make a, uh, to make a response rather than just allow them to make a response. You can send out uh, uh, prompts to get them to uh, click uh, a, a feedback rating. That gives you a certain amount of information. It actually also shows you the feedback that all your competitors have got, so it's a very, very useful tool in that industry. In your industry, how can you get those sorts of insights? How can you get insights from your target audience? Some sort of thing in a regular, um, regular feedback uh, system. Built into um, uh, TripAdvisor is actually the ability to uh, to poll people for ideas, uh, to to actively seek new ideas, and here's a range of different ideas, and one which actually says, um, I think it would be a good idea to have uh, have a digital fitness trainer in my room, um, and so here are uh, users, um, a, a user base out there who is actually giving feedback that you can take advantage of. This costs no money. It's there on the on the internet for you to look at and to uh, to understand, uh, get inside the the minds of customers. So this industry has feedback mechanisms. Um, 
there's a whole range of different social media and blogs, etc., that are out there as well to give feedback as well. Maybe it's not specific to your industry, but if you target the right um, uh, the right forums, then you're getting a lot of free insight. And it's just following the uh, following the forums, follow, following the blogs, looking at social media, and of course your own social media sites uh, will give you direct feedback. There's also traditional and trade media. Look at the trends. Look at what's happening in uh, in your trade and also just in the broader industry. And there's trade shows and interest groups out there. There's a lot of material online that you can just follow and just monitor in a passive way. Build that into your business systems. Keep an eye on these things. Keep a finger on the pulse of what your industry is doing. So there's all sorts of things that you can do with desktop uh, observation, compute just with the internet, um, do it on a weekly basis. There are trend watch websites, there's Google Alerts where Google will actually send you information that you're looking for on a weekly or daily basis if you if you wish. Look at some of the quirky internet sites um, that are out there that may impact on your on your market. You'll you'll get in, inside the head of some of the outlier users. Most of the innovation won't come from the core users. They'll, they'll actually come from the outliers. It'll come from the people who are doing things, those lead um, users that are innovating. Look, for example, for modifiers of, in your field. If you've got a, a product or a service, look at people who are customizing that or wanting it customized, or, um, who are putting things up on YouTube or photographs um, uh, 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 out on, uh, online to uh, to show how clever they've been at modifying and, and matching a camera with a telephone and therefore you've got a, a mobile phone with a camera involved, etc. These things have come out online by lead users and modifiers well ahead of industry producing them in the marketplace. And another passive way to some extent, um, uh, easy way that you can get feedback from your target market and get some insights into your customer base is actually have an advisory board. Um, have some lead customers um, on an advisory board. Invite invite them to come along. Um, You'll be surprised um, if you've got a good following um, how many people might uh, uh, might be quite happy to come along and give you some insights and give you some advice. Uh, put together a panel. Um, you may well give them uh, first access to things. They may actually um, get some benefit out of being on the advisory board as well. Uh, they may get some uh, free use, they may get some upgrades, um, you might be able to offer them all sorts of things, but in return you're getting good advice. This is a lot quicker, a lot sharper than going out to um, um, focus groups and, and uh, doing um, uh, long market research, etc. You'll get these people who are committed to um, you being the best in the marketplace, giving you good advice and you're using their eyes and ears in the marketplace as well at the same time. So that's sort of a passive uh, range of things to do, but um, I would suggest that you should actually more engage with your market, more actively seek information from the marketplace and from the entire ecosystem that's out there. Um, the, um, your um, suppliers and your customers and your customers' customers, the uh, whole supply chain. So more actively engage, I would suggest. Um, one way to, uh, to do this is uh, uh, put the product in the hands of, um, of customers. Watch them use it. Uh, here's a fire extinguisher uh, that was given to this lady as, long, as, as well as a pair of safety goggles uh, three minutes before uh, the, the fire was ignited and uh, she had to work out quite quickly how to use the fire extinguisher. Um, Watching people use your product, uh, perhaps even videotaping them use your product uh, in, in this way is actually a great source of insight into the customer and how well your product or service meets their needs. Um, watch whether or not they actually understand which way up it is, uh, how to use it. Do they need to read the instructions or are they very, very familiar with it? Customer insights are very important at every phase of developing new ideas as well as looking at your current product range. So with, an, with new ideas, right from the very first um, light bulb moment of creating an idea, 
all the way through the concept statement, the design brief, developing prototypes, and getting, going into production. At every one of those stages, you need to have input from your customer base, and you will get insights from your customer when you engage them at, uh, at each of those stages. So customer insights is uh, are very important at every stage uh, of the development process. And before you start actually developing a new product, you um, need to have some of these customer insights. And um, market research is a, is a major way of doing that. It can cost, um, cost money. Um, it can be as, uh, 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 as detailed as you wish um, or as short as you wish as well. Um, one of our earlier seminars, uh, webinars was, uh, was on market research and we've got quite a degree of, of capability in market research within the AIC. So we'd be keen to help you look uh, at that and help you guide you through the process of market research. But taking an active look at what your uh, uh, customer base uh, is wanting and needing and would like to have. So conducting user research, uh, determining your price, working out your, your channels to market, all of those sorts of, of uh, questions and tests and uh, inquiries are very important and can be done with market research. Um, that's um, not the only way of doing it. Some of these tools uh, will help with you doing that as well. What you're trying to do is actually gain some empathy with the customer so that you can understand. One of the problems with market research and one of the problems uh, with um, developing new things for the marketplace is that very often the, the research won't tell you exactly what it is that you should produce. You have to actually follow through with some understanding uh, and come up with ideas to put it back to the marketplace. Um, the old Henry Ford thing of uh, uh, the consumers in those days would have just wanted a faster horse. They would never have come up with an idea of a motor vehicle. That holds true in so many different ways. Um, um, the the Hilti uh, example I showed earlier, etc. There was no feedback from the market saying, "Would you please rent them to us?" So you're trying to gain an empathy in order to come up with these new ideas to put to the marketplace. You're trying to foresee the next move in the broader market and moving beyond just observing and to making an emotional connection with them. One way to capture that, and I keep talking about these tools, is to use an empathy map. This is a, a customer empathy map, which is um, um, a visual tool. I, I do use it on the whiteboard. Um, you can easily just uh, uh, put a circle and some and some diagonal lines and and lines on a on a page uh, on an A4 piece of paper or workbook or 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 a chart up on the wall. You don't need to have the uh, this particular canvas, but it's actually just going through stepping through these aspects of what a, um, what a um, customer is thinking about to get empathy with the customer. So with our customer, what sorts of things are they hearing out there? What are their friends saying? What are their boss saying if it's a business to business sale? What sorts of things are they hearing in the marketplace? What are they being um, influenced by? What do their influencers say, the people that they look up to, their, the lead buyers that they look forward to, um, that, um, uh, that they will follow uh, in their fashion mags or, or whatever it might be, uh, the online blogs, etc. What are their influencers saying and who are their influencers? What's the media saying, etc. So what's the space that they're being immersed in about what does that person hear? Also, what does the person see in advertisements and... Um, uh, uh, online, other people wearing things, other people using things, etc. What do they see out there? Describe the environment that they find themselves in. So uh, is it a, uh, a very high-end environment or is it a, a low-end environment that you're trying to sell into? Um, the, this person, what sort of person uh, is your customer in this case? What's around her? What are the visual influences? Um, 
Um, and in fact, that should be what visual influences exist, not exit. What catches the person's attention? Um, what are the things that they see in this field? Capture those sorts of things quickly on an empathy map. And then what does the person think and feel about all that? What really counts? What are their major preoccupations? Are they uh, uh, worried more about money or are they worried more about their kids getting a good education? Are they worried more about getting there safely? Uh, what do they think and feel? What are their worries? What are their concerns? What are their aspirations? Jot that down on the empathy map as well. These sorts of things start to give you an understanding of that customer. And if you can't answer the questions, you need to go and ask. You need to go and find out. If you think you know your customer, you'll soon find out when you try to do this customer empathy map whether or not you do, in fact, know your customer. And then what does the customer say and do? As opposed to what the influences are on them, what are they saying? What, um, how do they um, promote themselves? How do they talk about your particular product line, your field, um, your services? What's important to them? What appearance and style and how do they interact with others? All of these insights will actually lead towards giving you some understanding of the customer and how they make decisions. It will also give you an understanding of what pains the person. So what pain does she experience? What fears and worries? What keeps her awake at night? What frustrates her? And what obstacles does she strike? What really cheeses her off? Therein lies opportunity if you can understand and have empathy with the pain that she's experiencing. And what gain is she wanting? What does she want and need? What measures does she have for success? Uh, is it in terms of um, making savings at a sale? Uh, or is it in fact um, the, the, uh, uh, the quality of a designer gown? Or is it the, uh, the length of a holiday? Is it... Um, that it's overseas instead of uh, out bush. What is success in her mind? What excites her? What obstacles does she strike? Same question. Understanding the, the customer will enable you to understand the pain and gain, which will enable you to design your uh, business offering, your value proposition around your customer. Another thing that I'm suggesting that you do is actually capture, assess and sift all this information about all of your different target markets, etc. And that, it does take time, um, but it's important to do at, at least on a, um, a regular basis. How regular could be annually, uh, it could be more often than that. But a major part of the process is to understand those insights that you're, that you're gathering and to translate those into a value proposition. Another tool that exists to do that is the value proposition canvas. And it follows through very, very quickly from the, um, um, the empathy map um, previously. So here's uh, um, the overall canvas. And you'll notice up on the, on the top here, that's the business model canvas um, that we have. So these two diagrams here actually relate to the two key segments of the business model canvas, one being the customer segments which is the detail is here in this customer segment. And the other one is the value proposition here, what you're offering to the world, which relates over here. So this is your customer and this is your value proposition. So for every customer segment, it's worthwhile going through the details of what their customer's jobs are. What do they have to do? What are their actual jobs? What are they trying, what are they trying to get done? How can you help them do that? Um, they're trying to build a house, so they need reliable tools to get it done quickly. So how can you get them that? You don't have to sell them the tools. You could rent them the tools. What social jobs are you, are you helping your customer um, get done? Um, what emotional jobs are you helping them to get, uh, to get done as well? Things like security and uh, feeling good, um, understanding those needs those important requirements for the customer uh, is vital to, um, to moving forwards. So here are all the jobs that the customer needs to do. 
but then have a look too at what gains they're looking for. Which savings would make your customer most happy? What outcomes does your customer expect and, and what would they go, um, what would go beyond their expectations? And what would delight the current customer? So in the eyes of the customer, what gains are they looking for? What are their measures? On the flip side of that, what are the pains? What do the customer find too costly? What don't they want to pay for? How, um, how many features don't they want that uh, they're having to buy and pay for at the time? What makes your customer feel bad? If you can answer these questions about your customer, then you've got a, a good understanding of their needs, which can drive your value proposition. Those insights into the pains and gains will be vital in coming up with pain relievers. So understanding over here on the map, understanding the pains will enable you to come up with pain relievers. It will also enable you to come up with gain creators, which are these um, um, positive uh, attributes of your value proposition that match the gain that the, that the uh, customer is looking for. So going through this value proposition canvas um, enables you to put down responses and come up with ideas on how to respond. Come up with the products and services that uh, uh, that you might need to take or how to tweak your current products and services to take to the market. So you'll be able to get these, uh, get these slides and uh, get links to the, uh, these particular canvases and download them and look through the detail in your own, um, uh, in, in your own, uh, in your own time. So then once you've got an idea of your, um, um, the pains and gains, and then the uh, the value proposition that you're offering to the customer segment, you can then look at designing that and developing that and taking that back to the market. And taking that back to the market with concepts is another way to get good insights. Take designs back to the market and show them. Take stories back to the market. S storytelling, explaining what your thinking is, in terms of uh, a new idea, particularly going back to a reference group that you've got or lead users, um, will enable you to get insights back as well. So prototype using simple storybooks. It costs very little. Another key group to get to are actually um, uh, lead users as well. So you can actually produce rapid prototypes um, and put them in front of a key seg segment of the market. You can put together full-size mock-ups if you're coming up with a, with a shop or an office or uh, um, some, some sort of a customer interface like that and get people in. Uh, get them to give you feedback as to uh, whether or not you've hit the market mark or not. Having on board lead users is vital as well. Put your new product or service idea to people who are keen in the area, uh, particularly in the sports field. For high performance sports people, they use lead users um, quite a lot, A, to get their feedback, but also if they're using it, then they're the uh, influencers for the rest of their, uh, their cohort, the rest of their the target market. So these are all vital ways of getting feedback um, from your uh, from your customer segment and developing deep insights. So just to recap on on some of those, what we're recommending is that you develop a customer centric business culture. Focus on what's value to the customer to create your value proposition, to refine your value proposition. It's not what's value to you, it's what's value to your customer. They're the ones paying the money to keep your doors open. 
We're also suggesting that feedback is important, but insights are vital. So the feedback, the passive things, that's good, that's important, you need to do that. But to get insights, you actually need to go out and prod and look further. Um, watch and monitor, videotape, review the videotape uh, of people using your, your product or service. Uh, come up with ideas and, and put them in front of people, question them. Understand who they are and where they're coming from. Seek empathy from the customer in order to come up with the insights, in order to foresee the future. And there's a few simple and very effective tools and techniques that you can use tomorrow that, may, that don't cost you an arm and a leg, and there's uh, other things that, um, th that you can spend on to your heart's content. But there are simple, effective tools that you can use tomorrow to build your customer-centric business around. So with that, it's, I think it's important just to be interested in your customers' lives um, and uh, have an interest in how you can help them. If that attitude pervades the whole organisation and you take active steps to seek insights, you will um, um, go a long way to uh, understanding the market and getting a jump on your competitors. So that's the active part. Um, we'll um, uh, take questions now, but for, for those who um, may wish to, uh, uh, to move on at this time, there are another two webinars coming up. So I'll just leave that on the screen while uh, I uh, ask for um, uh, the questions here. Sean Smith, uh, my sort of co-producer, is sending me through uh, some, of the, uh, some of the questions. Um, and one of them here is that um, uh, Pam has asked whether the slides will be available after the webinar, and yes, they will. Um, so um, that's um, uh, we'll send out uh, links to uh, to the slides so people can have a look at those those things. So that's important. Um, electronic tools for um, uh, using the business model canvas. Yes, in fact, the business model canvas. Um, there's there's an app, and in fact. Um, um, Matthew here is talking about an app called Business Model Design um, and has created an online tool that we can send around a link with slides, so that's terrific. Um, it's a very, very useful tool and if you can um, have some, uh, uh, some automation, some app there to, uh, to make it work even better for you, then, uh, then that's great. So uh, we'll make sure we send that link around to everybody. Thank you, Matthew. That's terrific. Um, We've um, um, also um, um, got questions about um, uh, going back to that um, canvas to have another look at the, um, the empathy map. So, yeah, so this is the customer empathy map. And uh, I find that... Um, um, Having this um, in the background while you're working out uh, how to approach the uh, target market, how to uh, devise your market research, uh, how to phrase the questions that you want to ask to get those insights uh, is, um, is quite vital. Um, so it, it's all about gaining the empathy, really understanding what makes the customer tick, what are they... Um, um, what are they thinking about and uh, what motivates them. Um, some of the other uh, um, lead users in this, um, um, in this field too was uh, there's a, an Australian company called Crumpler who um, uh, developed a, a whole product range and a whole business uh, around effectively courier bags um, that um, became uh, quite trendy and it was the uh, the, the trend leaders that took them forwards, but really un understanding what the needs of the uh, uh, of the courier rider were was vital to the initial part of the business. But then the business changed. Understanding what the the the, the trendy underground user wanted was the next phase to launch that business. So it changed over time. The target market changed, and keeping an eye on that was vital to, uh, 
to their business. Um, just looking here as well, um, um, what role do you see social media has in the marketing mix for a small to medium business? And what are the first steps for integrating that into their mix? So, um, um, yeah, social media is um, is vital in the current um, in the current day and age. Depending on your industry, um, it may or may not be uh, something that you use on a, on a daily basis. Um, if you're business to business, sometimes the social media um, side of thing d doesn't um, doesn't translate well. Um, to that business-to-business -to -business environment, but often you can have conversations in the background uh, and engage the lead users uh, in um, in social media uh, conversations and get insights out of it that way, rather than it being a regular, uh, constant um, uh, front of mind thing as part of running of your of your operation. Um, so. Um, 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 and I've got a number of different um, social media items here. There are many more. Uh, LinkedIn is a major one for business-to-business -business field where you can have um, uh, forums in the background as well. Um, so just trolling those forums for customer insights is a very important thing as well. This is part of your desktop, uh, desktop research. That will enable you to then actively um, put together some stories and propositions to take to the market and get feedback. Um, this is um, using your insights to develop a new design to take to the market is what the design industry does and uh, uh, our webinar on new product development covered some of those uh, tools and approaches to being design led rather than being customer led the customer would want you to deliver everything and every uh, every possible feature with the highest quality in the shortest time for the least amount of money, uh, and you would quickly go broke if you followed that and delivered that to the letter. So, being totally customer led is not the way to go. Um, being customer centric is important, and then being design led so that you create your value proposition and put that to the marketplace. That's um, where we see things um, moving. Um, those, um, those next couple of webinars, by the way, um, are uh, uh, coming up. Um, the next one is on value curves on next Thursday. It's all about what is your company's value proposition and how do you compete in the, in the marketplace. It's very good to come up with a new idea of a new product that meets the needs of your customer but understanding how that fits with your competitors and their alternative spend is an important um, uh, is an important aspect of uh, uh, getting the, uh, getting the new products right in the marketplace or tweaking your current products um, following that on the uh, 3rd of April we actually have a, a webinar uh, uh, about funding new product development um, so how does your company fund product, uh, development of new products? Is it out of current revenue or uh, uh, do you have a separate budget for that or are you looking for external sources of funds? Um, so funding new product development, there's various alternatives and we'll cover that in our third webinar on Thursday the 3rd of April. There's a number of events that Aussiecom uh, 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 AIC runs, um, uh, workshops and uh, and um, and forums and things as well as these webinars. So uh, you can see those on aussiecom.com events is the website. Um, that's uh, getting close to uh, uh, to the end for us now, but uh, my contact details are there. If you want to be in contact with me, we'll certainly be in contact with you to send you um, uh, information. And uh, um, so we'll follow through. Um, there's, there's a number of other questions. Um, uh, Helen's just come through with a question, etc. Uh, we'll uh, follow through and contact people with uh, with responses to those questions. So we're not going to leave you out uh, out to dry. So I'd like to just acknowledge 
um, again, the um, uh, Department of Science, Information Technology, Innovation and the Arts from the Queensland Government uh, for, uh, for assisting us with funding these, uh, these webinars and workshops. So thank you all for listening. Um, I hope you've got something out of that. Certainly send, uh, send your feedback. Uh, we're actively involved in, uh, uh, in getting insights from our customers as well. So uh, please uh, send that through. Thank you very much. Um, have a good day and we uh, look forward to seeing you at, uh, at another event.